Hi there, my name is Lewis. Um, I just want to bring this out quickly so I don't have a funny introduction video to do this. I want to get this video out tonight. Um, but I think I found something that looks like the Flemish government has a problem. And I'll show you why. Get ready. Alright, so we were confronted in the sock with a lot of phishing emails coming through for some reason and they came from the Flemish government and they were really well made. I'll show you on my screen like I think this is the screenshots we have or, or they're not on the website so they were pretty much this it's in Dutch but they were very convincing and giving you the, the sentence that they were being forward to the well we call it the governmental inbox so the government provides you their civilians with um, a mailbox where all of their government communication comes to and you can expect your taxes your um, your your pension messages everything that belongs in communication with the government to be dropped off there and they and they really show it nicely here i think i hope hopefully can also show it in in the payload as well um, give you a portal where you can log in now the funny thing is Belgium has its own application. It's called It's Me. It's just like you would have Azure AD. It's an identification platform where you, with your identity card and with the help of your banking, can confirm your identity using that app. And this is pretty much what they're hinting. So let me show you the emails that we're seeing and the evidence of things that hmm, give me the indication of hmm, maybe something's wrong at the Flemish government. And there's a very valuable lesson to learn there. All right, so let me show you what's going on because I want to I want to make something clear. I have a story to tell. Um, this is an email, and let me show you one of the indicators, which is containing a suspicious URL. Let me pretty much open it. Uh, I don't want to keep it in my history now. Let me do this. Um, normally, you should do this in a sandbox, but this is like my, my throwaway PC. It doesn't really matter. Um, and here you can see the interactive flow presented by the government. They have a really nice copy of the Flemish government, their website, and they're pointing us as well to It's Me, which is the go-to app when you want to authenticate to the Flemish government. They try to impersonate it. So many people will say, well, I'll, I'll log in with It's Me. And because in the sign-in process, you always have to have a link with the bank the banking institutions in Belgium have a copy of your identity. So they use it as a way to say, well, when you register for It's Me, then you'll have to also do an authentication process for the bank. And then they'll know like, okay, yeah, this is you. So they're using this association with It's Me to lure you to do something. And it will become very clear what's happening. Here, they're pointing you, oh, wait, you have to log in via your bank, which for some people will like be ring a bell. Oh yeah, yeah, it's common. When you do the initial registration of It's Me, you have to use your bank to register. And this matches very well with what is being warned for um, by the government itself with, with the phishing emails. So, okay, let, let's continue with the flow. It's because it's very interesting of what's going on. Where's the, where's the, no, where's the website? Oh yeah, here. This is here. Did I click on this? No. Mm. Yes, I clicked here. So, oh no, I don't want to take um, this one. I know this one goes further. And um, I do this, and I, I'll, I'll make it quick and dirty. I do this, smash some numbers. Well, the pluses won't work. Uh, smash some numbers. I do uh, Melvin or login. And this website will start an interactive login asking me for my DigiPass for my bank. So they're actively trying to sign in on your banking credentials. Interesting. So this is the scheme. It means that they're after my banking credentials. Okay, that's clear. So it's a pretty dangerous phishing attempt, what they're doing. Now, let me show you the, the interesting part. Is If we look at the headers, we can see that the SPF is a soft fail. So let me explain you first what SPF is. So... SPF is a way of identifying who is allowed to send emails in my name. Meaning, if we have ser this server, which has an IP that starts with 44, it will send an email and it will bounce 
to my email protection. My email protection will say by default, well, hey, what is your SPF record saying for Flanders? And it will go to um, the SPF record of Flanders.be Flander and it will say, okay, is this in the list? And if it's not in the list, what has Flanders.be um, defined? Well, they say, if it's not in my list, it's actually a soft fail, meaning that based on what you have defined in your email protection, you can either choose like, ah, nah, I don't want it. I don't want to have it because it's not in completely in the list. Because if it has a soft fail, if it's not in this list, it will be marked by default as something malicious, suspicious, junky. Um, and if you have your set up your SPF records correctly, no, your SPF protection settings, then you'll say, nah, it's not in the SPF list. It's not a server that's supposed to send emails to, to me from this domain, well, then I don't want to see it. So what happens is, uh, it's a soft fail. If you have SPF protection set up correctly, it will point it to the junk or quarantine. Now, let me show you a second example. This one, here is again, an IP address, no reply at flounder.be. And here it is, Sender policy framework pass. Interesting. Is this also a malicious URL? Let me check. Or does it contain a malicious URL? Hmm, this looks pretty much suspicious. Let me open it. Yeah. This again is a suspicious URL. Interesting. But this this website, well, this website, this IP address is in the SPF record, meaning if I go back to my drawing, this server, when I send an email, and my email protection does, um, well, does a check of the IP address and checks, hey, Flanders.be SPF records, give me a list of who's allowed to send us an email in your name. Then it will see like, oh yeah, this IP address is in the list. When I check for SPF, well, on the SPF level, you're a pass. You're good. You're good to send emails in the name of Flanderen.be. You're going probably, maybe, straight to the inbox. Luckily, what we had here in this example is, well, the advanced filter. So the Microsoft Defender for Office pretty much detected like, no, no, no. Something besides the SPF record, something besides this is something is very wrong. This email doesn't match. So luckily... This email initially got um, blocked by advanced filtering. But we've noticed that even Microsoft had needed some time in order to realize like, wait, wait, this is a bad email. Something is not right. Even though when the SPF record is correct, there is suspicious stuff going on. So what is happening on the Flanders level? Let me show you. So if we go to... MX Toolbox, and we go to um, Vlaanderen.be. Um, uh, I can do an MX lookup, but it won't be the right thing because I want actually uh, stop. Well, it doesn't matter. If we go to um, do, if we do an SPF record lookup of Vlaanderen.be, so we're pretty much asking the records on the internet, hey. Who is allowed to send emails in the name of Vlaanderen.be? Which web servers are these? Then we can check, hey, in the net blocks of Vlaanderen.be, and let me get this um, server. I'm always clicking on the wrong, IP, uh, wrong message. And if we go here, and we go back to MX Toolbox, and I do Control F, we're realizing, wait a second. What is this? These servers are allowed to send emails in the name of Vlaanderen.be. How is this possible? Did Vlaanderen.be get compromised? Is this a web? Is this a, an email server on their domain? Is it somewhere they are hosting it? But based on the information I have here right now, they're pretty much saying like, "Yep, these IP addresses, we trust them. They are allowed to send emails in our name." So what has happened here? Hmm. Let's look up. Let's, let's find out. So if I go back to my IP address and I go back, I go to Cisco Talos, um, you enter the IP address here. 
Um, could be any tool, what you prefer, but I prefer this tool. I can see like, okay, this is IP address is owned by level 27 BVBR. So this is somewhere you can host servers. Let me look it up. And indeed, level27.be is actually a VPS, virtual private server, web hosting, domain hosting for agencies or customers who, where you can rent a server. Interesting, right? So the Flemish government is basically saying this company is, their IP address ranges is allowed to send emails in our name. So what has happened here? What I expect, suspect to have happened is that the Flemish government has some sort of part of infrastructure that is also being hosted as level 27.be. And attackers figured out like, hey, if we also buy a server that is hosted on this vendor, level 27.be, we might end up getting an IP address that is allowed in one of the SPF records of level uh, of Vlaanderen.be. And they pretty much did that. So within the customers of, of among the customers of level 27.be, there are actually fishers who try to impersonate Flanders and they can do a pretty good job because yes, their IP address is also allowed in the SPF records of Vlaanderen.be. So pretty smart guys to do this. Um, and what is actually pretty much the root cause? Well, for me, one of the biggest issues is like, Flanderen.be is allowing way too many um, SPF records, many, way too many IP ranges for the SPF records, giving a very large attack surface for their environment to get this done. Um, another part would be like, Vlaanderen.be should clean up their SPF records and I'm pretty much sure level27.be they should clean up this customer, find out which customer this is and kick him out of your environment because they are abusing your infrastructure and IP addresses. So what have we also done is um, we, have we have sent this to the, the, the Centre for Cybersecurity Belgium and we've noted that and, and what their response was, well, you have to train your end users. You have to train your end users to realize that this is phishing. Yes, I agree. End users have to realize or be able to detect phishing emails. But sometimes, and we have to admit, we were also doubting that, is this a legitimate email? Is it not? But when we went through the flow, we were like, oh no, the certificate doesn't match. It's something very suspicious. It's, this is not the official flow of, um, of a governmental website. Um, and I've seen multiple domains who, who they switch domains very often, which looked very convincing. And you have to realize these websites, civilians often visit like ah, two times a year when they want to check their pension. So they're not really familiarized with the official domain names that are being kept by the government. So what I feel here is like, mm, we as Flanders or level 27 have to step in or, or the Center for Cybersecurity have to step in and say, no, this IP address Clean up your SPF records, level 27, find out who's there and kill the threat actor who's being active there. Because yes, on a technology point of view, we can also intervene and protect the civilians of Flanders. So yes, I think there's a very valuable lesson this year, especially on the SPF level. Try to keep SPF as clean as possible. Don't trust third party servers to send emails in your name. Um, I think another great example is MailChimp. If you check um, the MailChimp servers, MailChimp, uh, as, uh, MailChimp servers IP addresses, if we do this, uh, if you go to the here, the, 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 they'll see, well, these are the IP addresses MailChimp allows. So they'll say, yeah, you have to put these also in your SPF record. But have you seen these ranges? If I've also become a, uh, a customer of MailChimp, I will be also will be sending from these IP addresses, meaning, well, I might pass the SPF check. Mm -hmm. You see, it's another way of getting in and getting 
past the SPF check. So it's in the middle of the night and I wanted to get this video out. It's going to be probably be quick and dirty, but there's a very interesting lesson to learn here is that email hygiene is very important. You want to keep your SPF records as clean, as specific as possible because, well, yeah, they found a way in. And this campaign is very convincing. It's being sent to professional, to companies, which, yeah, they have sufficient, hopefully sufficient anti-phishing measures that they can detect these threats. But this email campaign or phishing campaign is also being sent to a lot of end users who are relying on a Gmail, an Outlook, which is very common in Belgium. And those email providers, they don't have that advanced email protection. And probably, if the SPF is correct, it will probably be delivered. And I don't want to know what the impact is going to be because for personally, I found this a really, really convincing email and phishing campaign, especially with the websites. They've done their job. They've done their research on a technical level. Yes, it's very clear, but when you're not that technically educated in recognizing it, mm, many people are going to fall for this. So this is why I believe that the the Flemish government and level27.be have to step up. And even the, the, the Center for Cybersecurity um, from Belgium have to step up and intervene and make sure that these kind of mistakes do not impact the whole Flemish um, people. The Flemish people aren't affected by this because this could be prevented. This is just a part of good email hygiene and double checking, even when you get reports, but I'm pretty sure they will get a lot of reports because we also sent an email to the Center for Cybersecurity and to I, maybe to Flanders. I'm not sure if we went that far, um, but this is where the Center for Cybersecurity, in my eyes, would directly contact Flanders and say like, hey, wait, this isn't correct. This doesn't match. You have to correct this. But the response we had from the CC, from, from the Center for Cybersecurity was, well, you have to educate your users. Yeah, I agree. But on a technical level, I see a, clearly a good improvement that is opening up the attack surface for your civilians.